everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Quick Strike. My name is Michael Wax, joined as always with my co-host Jake Ricker. Jake, the Lightning improved to 3-0 and following a 3-2 to win versus the Columbus Blue Jackets in overtime. Braden Point once again, the overtime hero. How are you doing tonight? Well, with a Lightning win, I'm always doing fantastic, Michael. Uh, you know, it was a really interesting game that I had some, some ups and downs, definitely some negatives coming out of this game. But Obviously, anytime we can get a win and improve that undefeated record, I'm a happy guy. Yeah, we'll just get right into it. You know, we're not going to talk about this goal by goal like we used to back last year, but we should talk about how the first 30 seconds there was a goal. Victor Hedman with a really rare defensive turnover. Uh, Andre Vasilevsky wasn't really in position. Columbus goes up one nothing. But for the rest of the game, I thought the Lightning did a very good job on the defensive side of things. I don't know what you saw, what you thought of it. Yeah, well, and starting off with that, you know, the first period and that goal specifically, that, that first period screamed to me, Russ. I think I talked about this. I remember, I think we talked about it in the video when we did our update that two of these games were going to get canceled for the Lightning because of COVID. I mentioned the Lightning often struggle when they have multiple days off. And I think that clearly showed in the first period because – you mentioned the defensive breakdown that they had uh, that ultimately led to that goal. And just that whole first period, I thought Columbus really kind of dominated that first period. So uh, there was some clear issues coming, and I think mostly from Russ. Luckily, though, uh, you're right. Things got a lot better very quickly. The second period was fantastic by Lightning, which we'll get to uh, in a minute. Third period was, was hit or miss, but definitely an improvement from that first period overall, which is good to see that the Lightning were able to quickly adjust. Um, and it wasn't a situation of – you know, they adjusted, but it was too little too late. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people think about rest versus rust. That seems to be a common, you know, question when it comes to the playoffs or, you know, whether teams coming off a bye week or something like that. I actually think those two things correlate. And we talked about this, uh, or I put this out in one of the Babel's tweets when I was covering the game. They look rested. They also look very rusty. The passes weren't crisp. The defense's play was a little bit uh, on the weaker side than it normally is. I think some of that has to do with the personnel that's on the ice. But again, that's just me. Uh, but overall, they kind of look sloppy in that first period. Uh, it got a lot better in that second period. Headlined by Ryan McDonough, who got his 300th NHL point with his assist on Blake Coleman's goal, a beautiful passing play from Yanni Gord to Ryan McDonough to Blake Coleman. And then just a minute and a half later, he got his 301st NHL point on his pass to Matthew Joseph. You know, he was the catalyst. We think of Victor Hedman being the catalyst. Ryan McDonough was the catalyst of that comeback, showed that he is that number one defenseman that the Lightning may need if Victor Hedman ever goes down. Yeah, Ryan McDonough often gets, you know, kind of overshadowed by Victor Hedman. You know, a lot, of, a lot of teams, Ryan McDonough is the number one guy but because we use someone like Victor Hedman, he just doesn't get as much attention. But he was fantastic in that second period. He's obviously a super solid defenseman for the Lightning. But, you know, I think someone who else also deserves some praise, Michael, uh, from especially that second period is Matthew Joseph. Uh, I mentioned him, I think, early on in the in the first game. But again, tonight, he was fantastic. He is really out there to prove that he deserves a spot on this roster. And I hope we continue to see him in the lineup going forward because he is I, – I don't know what it was about – or what it is about this year versus last year, but it, it may be his – I mean, he's always had the speed, but it just seems like he's got a knack for the puck this year. He's always in the right place at the right time. He's got a great shot. That shot from the slot was beautiful. Uh, so Matthew Joseph and Ryan McDonough both had fantastic periods. That's ultimately what helped the Lightning take a two-to-one lead there for a while. Yeah, and when we've seen Joseph over this couple of games to start off the season, and even in practice, he was on that second line in the first game, he bumped down to the fourth line where he didn't look that good, was projected to be on the third line if Blake Coleman was going to be out because of the COVID list, and then was put back on the fourth line when Blake Coleman was deemed to be healthy and looked fantastic. You know, he is one of those guys that it really seems like you put him anywhere in the lineup and he's going to succeed. I know he had a bad second game on that fourth line, but it took some getting used to, you know, he's not going to have a knack for it right away. Uh, you mentioned what changed from last year to this year. I really think his time in Syracuse was bolstered 
uh, bolstered his overall play, but definitely bolstered his idea of where he needs to be in the offensive zone. When he would be on the lightning originally, his goal was, okay, I'm going to rush up the boards. And if I'm not stopped at the boards, which happened frequently, I'm going to try to beat everybody to the goal. He took his time in Syracuse and he decided, you know what? I'm just going to sit here. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to see how the play develops. I'm going to see where I need to go. Do I need to go in front of the net? Do I need to go to uh, the wings? Do I need to go uh, behind the net? Do I even need to go to the, the center point and take a slap shot, which he did in this game where he was right in the slot. So his eye for the puck has been tremendous this year. Uh, and I you know it's only been three games, but it's been a very solid three games for him. Definitely, Joseph has been fantastic. And I think uh, not to stick on him too long, but I think probably, you know, all that time in the bubble with those veterans watching them play in, in this Stanley Cup and throughout the whole playoffs and the finals as well. I bet that did him a lot of good uh, as well, getting to see those guys play and how, you know, you play at such a, a, a high level. Uh, one thing, though, Michael, I think I want to mention, too, is that I thought the penalty kill uh, struggled a little bit in this one, more specifically when Columbus was able to tie the game. At two, Columbus scored almost immediately on that power play. I think we mentioned this last time. Power play seems like it's – or penalty kill, excuse me, is taking a little bit of a hit. You know, it's still very, very early here with only three games after we had those two games from Dallas can't uh, postpone. But penalty kill I didn't think was fantastic tonight. Even on the ones they did kill, uh, it seemed like they were, you know, kind of on the ropes for a while. Yeah, I think the special teams overall was kind of lackluster. You know, we talked about, you know, don't worry about it two, three games in. Well, the Lightning have given up a, a power play goal in every game that they've played so far this season. The first one was a fluke, let's be very honest, the one that went off of Cernak and off of Vasilevsky. But the other two, you know, that is a defensive breakdown that shouldn't happen. It's happened twice in two games now. Uh, the power play I'm less concerned about. You know, you've got some skilled players that are still trying to figure out what role they're supposed to play without Nikita Kucherov. By the way, wasn't that a storyline that NBC drove into the ground was Kucherov not being on the team, but it's, it is a storyline. Like he's not on the power play. That's something that they have to adjust to. I don't think they've done it quite yet. No. And we can expect them to eventually get that over time. I mean, we saw how long it took the lightning to figure things out when Stamkos was not on the power play. You know, they really didn't get the power play going until the later in that Boston series. And even after the Boston series, things also kind of tailed off again a little bit. So I, I would expect this to take a while. You know, I'm not freaking out about anything. Obviously again, you mentioned it, it's only three games in uh, and we're winning games right now. So it's not like our power play is the biggest thing holding us back right now. We're we still had some success. Uh, on the power play as as well. So, but I, I do expect them to continue to make some changes and change things up uh, in the future there. And hopefully we can get things figured out eventually. Uh, but, you know, as time goes on, you, you hope to do, see that do get fixed. And if it doesn't, you know, then it starts to become a little bit of a concern. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one more positive before we get to sort of the negatives of what we didn't like from this game. Uh, the overtime period starts and Victor Hedman sees what Ryan McDonough has done and says, I'll do you one better. And he goes in the, uh, takes the puck all the way, you know, has a little give and go with Steven Samkos and lays a beautiful pass over Britain Point. Uh, one of the nicer passes in this game in terms of getting the puck onto the stick of the guy who scored, which is really weird considering that four of the five goals had tremendous passes that led to the goals that were being scored. So, uh, you know, Hedman redeemed himself. You know, I don't think this was going to be a permanent thing of him giving the puck away and missing defensive uh, judgments and, you know, pinching too often in the offensive zone. Uh, he's a, like Victor Hedman's the best. Like, let's just, that's not mine's word. Victor Hedman is the best defenseman in the league. He's one of the best lightning players of all time. You know, he saw that he made a mistake and he improved on it. And, you know, there's not enough praise I can give to Hedman that shows that, you know, he is the guy uh, and will be the guy for even longer. 
and listen, nobody's perfect. We all know that everybody's human. Everybody's going to make mistakes. But the fact is, as we, you pointed out, Hedman came back and made up for that mistake and ended up helping out on that game winning goal. And, and speaking of that game winning goal, Braden Point, man, he's been fantastic against Columbus specifically as well. You know, people joke all the time that Tyler Johnson owns the Detroit Red Wings because he's always scoring goals against them. Uh, I think it's safe to say that Braden Point owns the Columbus Blue Jackets because whatever it is, whenever we're playing them, uh, he just has a, a knack for the net, apparently, which is great. Always in overtime as well, which is something else that's uh, kind of interesting. But great job by both those guys on that play to, to ultimately get the Lightning that extra point and remain undefeated. Yeah, I'm, I don't necessarily think of Braden Point is the, you know, guy when it comes to you know the king slayer of the the columbus blue jackets i would just yeah, say man. he's the i would just say he's the king of overtime you know he's beaten so many teams in overtime the panthers the jets uh you know he's beaten the blue jackets multiple times i, I believe he's tied the nhl record for most overtime goals in a single season at one point uh i think it was in his rookie year i don't Feel free to com uh, correct me in the comments because, you know, I'm not perfect either, just like Victor Edmond. But uh, it, it seems that we have to get to the negatives. And again, like other games, the negatives are sort of easy to point out because it wasn't the entire team kind of collapsing on itself. The entire team played pretty well for the most part. Uh, one guy that I am going to be very honest needs to sit is Luke Shen. I know he had a fight in this game and he fought Nick Foligno, who was being a pain, but he had a terrible game. And if you don't want to sit Luke Shen, you got to sit Jan Ruda because Ruda took two penalties as well and was constantly missing his assignments. And you didn't notice because Victor Hedman was there to save the day. One of these two guys either needs to step up or step out of the lineup and let Cal Foot or uh, Andres Borgman come into the lineup and really, you know, show what they've got. And that's the thing, I think, when you have a guy like Cal Foote, who has shown that he's really close to breaking that NHL uh, level of play, I think he definitely deserves an opportunity to try and go out there and prove that in these big time regular season games. So I would love to see Foot get an opportunity. And you're right, Shen and Ruta definitely did not have their greatest of games. You know, for what it's worth, you know, I think the Shen fight, you know, that that does build some energy on teams more often than not. So, uh, you know, he does deserve a little bit of credit for that. But overall, both those guys did not have good games uh, uh, tonight for sure. So I would definitely like to see Foot get in there at some point. I would expect him to. I think the Lightning are going to constantly rotate these guys out. You know, we may see that that just a constant rotation all year unless one player really steps up. Uh, now, as of when Cooper will do that, who knows? Cooper likes to work in, in mysterious ways a lot of times. Uh, but the biggest negative for me, Michael, and I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but it was just that slow start. That, And we've seen this for the second time now. That slow start was not great. And again, you know, that was also probably largely due to that six-day gap that we had for not playing games. Uh, but again, you, you can't do that at, at the end of the day. So the, the slow start was definitely the biggest issue. And then the special team, which I kind of touched on before as well, is something that I'd like to see improved. But again, as you mentioned, overall, a good game. And anytime you get the win, there's not too much to complain about. Yeah, absolutely. One more, not to stay negative, but one more thing I was vastly disappointed in. Uh, Tyler Johnson in this game had a wide open net on a cross crease feed from Anthony Sorelli didn't even touch the puck like that is a moment where you seal the game right there and you get some confidence on your stick just completely missed it and it's just a moment I thought overall Johnson had a decent game but you know those moments need to be buried if you're going to get paid five million dollars a year and be on that second line in that top six or potentially if there's an injury play on that first line uh, but overall Jake any final thoughts from this overtime win versus Columbus? Not really. I think we summed it up pretty well. Like I said, I'm, I'm very happy the Lightning were able to pull off the win here. To be able to start off the season 3-0 is fantastic. Uh, this is going to be a very tough year. As we mentioned, we're going to be playing Columbus again on Saturday. So, you know, and, and Columbus is going to want revenge. That's going to be even harder 
game for these guys, especially in these COVID times. So to start off 3-0, that's a very good start for the Lightning. First place in the division. I like what I'm seeing. Let's keep it up and, and you know, defend our Stanley Cup. Uh, great, great start to the season. A reminder that that game on Saturday has been moved from 7 p.m. to 2 p.m., so it is a matinee game. Don't miss it. I know we had some problems with the TV uh, going on in uh, in this game. I, I know a lot of people were not happy because they couldn't watch the game, but you know, don't be mad if you go on at 7 p.m. and there's no game because it happened earlier in the day. But you know, that is going to do it for this edition of Quick Strikes. My name is Mike Wax here with Jake Ricker. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Click that bell for notifications and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Bay underscore Bolt. Guys, hopefully the lightning will be 4-0 the next time that we grace your YouTube screens. Have a great night. Go Bolt.